excuse me, going from rectangular to polar, it was more of using what was already there and just substituting. When we look at the examples here for polar to rectangular, um, we're going to have to do a little bit more to get it to the point where we can substitute. So uh, let me remind you of some of the relationships that we're going to need. Okay, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Okay, we're going to have to turn r's into x's and y's. So that's one of the ways we may do it. Um, our other relationship, tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Or we may need to use it um, in its isolated form. Theta equals the inverse tangent of y over x. Uh, and somewhere along the line, we may need that x equals r cosine of theta and y equals r sine of theta. Okay, so those are just the relationships that we've been dealing with the last couple days. Nothing new there. Okay, I'm just reminding you of them, putting them there so that <clears throat> you can see them and hopefully it'll make you realize what you need to do. All right, so R equals 3. Let's think, before we get started, let's think about what that's the equation of. Okay, R equals 3. What did we say yesterday that was the equation of? If the radius equals 3, what are we talking about? What are we talking about with the radius? A circle, okay? R equals 3 is the equation, is one type of an equation for a circle in polar coordinates. So if we think about what a circle looks like in rectangular, we're going to have to end up with it squared by squared, right, somehow. All right. <clears throat> so if we look at our equation, we're trying to substitute for R. Well, we really don't have anything over here that has just R. Okay, so let's do this. Let's square both sides of our equation. We can do that. As long as you do it to both sides of the equation, you can do that. So r squared equals 9. Now we have an expression for r squared that we can substitute. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So we're going to substitute x squared plus y squared for r squared. And that looks like a negative 9. Okay, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 9 is the equation of a circle with a radius of 3 in rectangular form, right? And a center of the origin. So that is that. Okay, let's look at B. We've got theta equals pi over 4. Well, if we look at our relationships that we had over here, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. So let's plug that in. Theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, and that is equal to pi over 4. Well, typically we want our equations to be y equals. That is not y equals. Y is stuck inside the tangent. So if we write the other form of this equation, that means y is equal to the regular tangent. Okay, if I move tangent to the other side, it goes from either regular to inverse, or in this case, inverse to uh, standard tangent of pi over 4. What's the value of tangent of pi over 4? 1. Okay. At pi over 4, sine and cosine have the same value. So when you put the sine ratio over the cosine ratio, it's going to equal 1. So we've got y over x is equal to 1. And then if we solve that for y, we just multiply by x. So this is <clears throat> the same as the function y equals x. So theta equals pi over 4 is apparently a linear function or a linear graph. Okay, Because y equals x is linear. Okay, let's look at C. We've got R equals the cosecant of theta. R equals the cosecant of theta. Well, none of our equations have cosecant in them. Okay, none of them have cosecant in them. Some of them, though, have sine and cosine. So how about we rewrite cosecant as, how do we write that in terms of sine or cosine? It's 1 over sine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. 
So if I'm looking at my equations that I've got to choose from, one of them is R times the sine of theta. If I move that sine from that denominator there by multiplying, I've got R sine of theta is equal to 1. R sine of theta is equal to Y. R sine of theta is equal to Y. So Y equals 1 is the rectangular version of the equation r equals cosecant of theta. So apparently, that's another line, particularly a horizontal line. Okay, let's look at d. Let's look at d. r equals 3 sine of theta plus 6 cosine of theta. Now, let's you, you use yesterday to kind of help us just know where we're headed with this. What equation ended up kind of looking like this? Look beside you and, and what equation ended up, uh, look on your notes, what equation ended up looking like that? Okay, there was, there was multiplying, the foiling was involved. What type of, what, what do we call it? What type of function was it? It's right there on your notes, literally right beside what y'all are writing down right now. Huh? Okay, yes, it's polar. I'm asking what rectangular equation ended up looking like this in polar form? A circle. It's literally example D right beside you. We're doing example D. Imagine that. What a coincidence. All right. <clears throat> so this is going to end up look, looking like a circle in some form or fashion, hopefully. That's the plan. Okay. But we don't have anything that we can substitute at this moment. We don't have an expression for just R equals. We don't have an expression for just sine of theta. So let's go through and multiply everything by R. Okay, as long as you do it to everything in the equation, you're allowed to do it. Okay, so r times r is r squared. Well, in that convenient, we can substitute for r squared. 3r sine of theta, we've got an expression for r sine of theta, plus 6r cosine of theta. We've got an expression for r cosine of theta. So let's do the substitutions. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. R sine of theta is equal to y and 6, or excuse me, R cosine of theta is equal to x. So that gives us x squared plus y squared equals 3y plus 6x. Now, that's all fine and dandy. We got rid of all the polar stuff. We've got just x's and y's. <clears throat> so technically, it's in rectangular form. Technically, it's in rectangular form. Um, but it doesn't really do us a whole lot of good. Now, this has nothing to do with polar and rectangular, but I did want to throw this out. This is called an implicit function. Okay, It's called an implicit function. Uh, what an implicit function means is you can't completely isolate the y. If we were going to try and solve this for y... If we were trying to solve this for y, um, then we would have to do uh, quite a bit of work to get to that point. <clears throat> so we can't completely solve it for y, but we can put it in the form where it does look like a circle so we, so we can identify its center and uh, its radius. So does anybody remember from Math 3 how we do that? No. Okay, well, guess what? I'm going to remind you. We need to move the x's and the y's over. Now, we can't actually combine anything, but what we are going to do, and I'm going to purposefully leave a space. Is this starting to look familiar at all? A little bit. Do you know what I'm going to do with that space? I'm going to complete the square, maybe. Maybe a little bit. Okay, let's complete the square. 
So over here to the side, we need to do a little bit of side work. Completing the square means we're trying to turn x squared minus 6x plus something into a perfect square trinomial. So we divide the negative 6 by 2, we get negative 3, and we square it. So that means plus 9 <laughs> turns that into a perfect square trinomial. Now, if we added 9 over here on the left side of the equation, we got to keep it balanced by adding 9 over here on the right side of the equation. Okay. Now, if we do the same thing with the y's, unfortunately, negative 3 is not evenly divisible by 2, so we're going to have to deal with a little fraction here, but that's okay. Negative 3 squared is positive 9, 2 squared is 4, so that means 9 over 4 completes the square. Yes? A 2. That's just that's the process of completing the square. You divide it by 2. You take the linear term, the negative 6 and the negative 3, and you divide it by 2. That's just how completing the square works. Okay, so we've turned them into perfect square trinomials. So that means that they're factorable now. x minus 3 squared plus y minus 3 over 2 squared. That number is always the number that you squared. Okay, the number that goes in the parentheses is always the number that was squared. Uh, 9 plus 9 over 4. Let's practice with our fractions for a second. If we're going to combine those, we need to express 9 as 36 over 4. And 36 plus 9 is 45. So that is now a circle in standard form. So its center is positive 3, positive 3 over 2. Its radius is the square root of 45 over 4, which reduces to the square root of 45 over 2. And if we want to keep going with the square root, that simplifies into 3 square roots of 5 over 2. Because 45 is 9 times 5. The square root of 9 is 3. 5 stays under. Now, the problem didn't ask us to, to identify all that stuff, but I figured it was a good chance to review. Okay, um, but this is the main focus. That is the equation of that circle in rectangular form as opposed to polar form. All right, so now we have some problems.